Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on Indian poetry in English. You are listening to these lectures by Binod Mishra. If you remember well, in the previous lecture, uh, we uh, talked about Arvind Krishna Mehrutra. In the present lecture, we are going to talk about a woman poet who is Kamala Das. Friends, Indian English poetry, till now as we have learnt, we have discussed two major voices, especially two major women's voices. One was that of Torudat and the other was Sarajni Naidu. Now, these two women's voices were somehow or the other soothing, imitating, pleasant, musical. And today the poet that we are going to talk about, Kamala Das, her voice is a bit different. And today you will find that a women's voice can also be as assertive as that of a man's. Kamala Das is a very familiar name in Indian English poetry and many of you might have read, heard, understood and enjoyed Kamala Das poetry. There are different sorts of views about Kamala Das. Many people have actually criticized her. They have got a very sort of reserved impression about Kamala Das. They also have looked at her poems in a very narrow manner because her poems are very free, frank, bold. But today we shall see Kamala Das both as a poet, also as a person, how the poet and her own voice, they at times override each other and finally the voice that emerges is that voice of a poet or is that voice of actually a woman and hence we shall be calling this phase, I mean the phase that we are going to discuss as an existentialist phase because till now we have been uh, listening to or learning modern poetry, postmodern voices. Today is a voice that we can consider as an existential voice. Most of you are aware of this term existential or existentialism which is actually a western ideology, western ideology of existence of man his place and function in the world, his relationship with God. M many of you who are not acquainted with this term might be very curious to know what actually existentialism does. My dear friends, the main focus of existentialism is to search for meaning, to search for authenticity, to search for a sort of choice because the existentialists, existentialists believe uh, that all of us can create our own world with the sort of choices that we have. It is not that something is permanent. Man can create himself through his consciousness. Man can create himself through his action and that is what existentialists aim at. There have been uh, many major existentialist philosopher, namely Soren Kierkegaard, then Heidegger, Nietzsche, Jeopal, Sartre and all and the basic you know uh, the principle or one catch word that goes is existence precedes essence meaning thereby nature is not permanent, nature is not uh, everything rather it is man, man's existence in this world which is very important and you will find uh, that Kamala Das also uh, if, if we have to categorize Kamala Das as an Indian English poet, she can be considered to be among the first rank of existentialist poets in Indian English poetry. Indian sense of existentialism can be found in many poets and today we are going to discuss Kamala Das as I have said. There are other names also that we shall also discuss namely Adil Jassawala, then Ji Patel and then Preeti Snandi. But before we go, 
into uh, the work of Kamla Das. Let us try to understand who Kamla Das was, what was actually uh, uh, her life and what were the events that took place in her life, how she became an existentialist because every poet is actually in some way or the other the imprint of age, the imprint of the surroundings and in that regard Kamla Das also was not an exception. Rather Kamla Das became an example for the future women poets especially writing in Indian English poetry. Kamla Das was born in Malabar, Kerala uh, in, in the year 1934, fine. She was actually, uh, she was born a Hindu and in a traditional uh, Kerala family, but later on she converted herself to Islam and her name also got changed and she became Kamala Suraya. Kamala uh, Das had found writing as a legacy because her mother was also a writer and she, as uh, she came from the family of uh, the royal uh, Nalpat clan, her mother uh, Balamani Amma also used to write but in Malayalam and it is from here that Kamala Das also uh, took up uh, this uh, idea of writing. Though she got her early education in some schools, especially in convent schools first in Kolkata and then she had also uh, been at uh, Mumbai and in some other metros. She did not have the formal education uh, like uh, other poets whom we have discussed. What actually uh, brought a sort of change in Kamala Das' life was her early marriage because uh, she, she got married quite earlier to a bank officer named Madhav Das and this is after this, uh, Kamala became Kamala Das only at the age of 15 she was married. Kamala Das wrote both uh, in English as well as in Malayalam and Kamala Das left us in 2009. Now as regards her life and achievements, we can find that uh, Kamala Das because of her, her writing, she became very popular only at an early age. She was shortlisted for a uh, Nobel Prize in Literature in 1984. And then she also uh, was awarded Sahit Academy Award in 1985 for her collected poems. It is often said uh, uh, that, that Kamala Das was excessively interested in the pleasures of the body. Many of her poems have also been rated as uh, carpe dime meaning thereby eat, drink and be merry meaning thereby a very practical approach to life and, and uh, because of her obsession with her body and because of her obsession uh, with a frank assertion of uh, sexual matters and all, she has also been considered to be nymphomaniac, nymphomaniac. I, meaning thereby she was actually excessively in love with the nuances of the body, with the chemistry of the body and for which she has also been criticized too much. Uh, the eternal Eve which actually stands for uh, lust. Uh, so we can find the celebration of Eve in her essential femininity as uh, uh, Nayak, M. K. Nayak, the celebrated historian of Indian English literature says. Now Kamala Das came in an age uh, when all around the world, I mean in US and other countries, uh, there was actually uh, an air of confessional poetry going on and Kamala Das also could not become unaffected with that, fine. So initial poems that she wrote. Uh, they, they actually were written in her grandmother's house uh, and then uh, she was actually, it appears uh, that Kamala Das had a natural flair for writing, a natural flair for writing. So and, and uh, Kamala Das is also one confessional poet because like a confessional poet, she actually uh, makes all her private experiences public by writing uh, poetry. That is why these private experiences, they have been written in a very autobiographical style and one can find uh, that it appears as if Kamala Das is talking to us. Kamala Das is expressing her own uh, private fears, uh, angers, angst, feelings and all and it is also said uh, that she was very harsh against uh, the patriarchal world order. 
in especially in American poetry, any sextant, Sylvia Plath and Robert Lowell, all these have been confessional poets. And Kamla Das also uh, started writing in a confessional tone. In majority of her poems, you can find uh, the use of I, meaning thereby it is in a very personal manner. She captures the audience or her readers in a very uh, personal manner and tries to remake herself. Now the question is, uh, if Kamla Das' poetry, if it talks only about the body or the pages of the body, can Kamla Das be considered to be a poet or she was simply, as many people have also called her, uh, a sort of Indian Monroe. Fine, you, you might be reminded of the American actress, no, Marilyn Monroe, who was actually very infamous for all these things and Kamla Das has also been uh, given this term. Many people have also uh, called her sex goddess. Many people also try uh, to put her works and sub sub circumscribe her works as being essentially bodily oriented. But unless and until we delve deep into the world of Kamla Das, we cannot make a proper estimation of her. Her autobiographical works often are ethnic and talks about identity and culture. Uh, let us uh, take one line from one of her early poems which she wrote uh, in her grandmother's house uh, and, and the poem goes like this. You cannot believe darling, can you? that I lived in such a house and was proud and loved, who have lost my way and beg now at a stranger's doors. You can find that most of the words used by Kamla Das, they are quite, you know, harsh at times and they appear to be very much alleging and there is a sort of allegation against the man's world. Receive love at least in a small change. Look at the word, at least in a small change. Kamla Das actually believed that the men's world was completely biased and that a woman was always exploited and the woman had no role even in marital relationships or her choices, she did not have any preferences. That is why most of Kamla Das's uh, uh, poetry as Kamla Das also in her uh, own, uh, you know, admission and in several interviews, uh, she has said uh, that of course, she is uh, uh, excessively busy with her uh, works uh, which actually talk about body, but then through this she actually wants to make a sort of discovery. What she says is very significant here. There is some discovery that I have made recently that while I leave, I cannot write. Writing was a passion for her. And on the other hand, she says, and while I write, I cannot leave. Either leave or write poetry. I cannot do both at the same time. There is no audience here for English poetry. So, Kamla Das believed that she should have a voice of her own. Later on, we will find that even when uh, people also talk about her use of English language and then she becomes very assertive and she actually says that the language that, that, that I speak in becomes mine, we will we'll come to see. She actually felt that education was full of things that are of no use to you in real life. A poet's raw material, according to Das, is not a stone or clay. Actually, in this way, she is also attacking many of her contemporary poets who are talking about stone and clay and nature and other things. But Kamla Das being a woman poet, for the first time she realized that women should have a voice of her own and that is why she has been considered to be a rebellion. It is her personality. I could not escape from my predicament even for a moment. And what was that predicament, my dear friend? What were actually those uh, uh, struggles and the troubles that Kamla Das went through? Initially, her 50s poems are subjective and lyrical. Initially, when she started, she was lyrical also, though you can find when we read her poems, you can find that the poems go on very naturally, as naturally as wind sears, as naturally as the flow of sea and sea or water becomes a consistent image in the works of Kamla Das. But her 60s poems are metaphysical. Of course, when a poet starts his or her journey, Initially, they are actually attracted towards meter, towards rhyme. But as they grow up, 
they start making certain uh, questions, certain interrogations, these interrogations to the soul. And what happens? Kamla Das has time and again said that her poems have only been judged on the basis of her early experiences and all. She has written, but while so she wrote extensively in a frank manner, in a very candid manner, in a very con in, in a man manner of confession, but people actually misunderstood it and considered her and rather bracketed her as one who was simply, uh, uh, simply concerned with sex, with body. Now, what actually are her works? My dear friends, Kamla Das was not only a writer of poems, but she has also written her own autobiography. And her autobiography and her poetic collections bear a close connection in and between and that is why many of her own secrets have also been disclosed. So, the very first uh, collection that she uh, wrote uh, was Summer in Calcutta. You should also look at uh, the titles of the poem that will also give you a more you know meaningful impression of what sort of uh, poetic you know desire and feelings Kamla Das was burning or Kamla Das was suffering, Kamla Das was tolerating rather. Summer in Calcutta which came in 1965 then the Descendants which came in 1967 followed by the Old Playhouse and other poems which came out in 1973 and then came Collected Poems Volume 1 and later on some other works as well. Uh, here we, we must uh, uh, remember that Kamla Das also got Sahit Academy Award for her uh, works Collected Poems. Now, there are uh, end number of poems written by Kamla Das, but I have taken some such poems which are prescribed in majority of the universities because Kamla Das is a very familiar uh, name and Kamla Das is uh, read, Kamla Das is uh, enjoyed and Kamla Das is examined uh, through different layers of interpretations. But my dear friends, since Kamla Das works are very candid, we cannot make more meaning, rather we are more prone to knowing the feelings of the poet. So, in this regard, the very first poem is an introduction an introduction. I will be uh, reading the lines of the poem and the way I read, I think you must pay proper, you know, uh, listening to it so that we can understand how words convey meaning and there is, you know, you do not need any effort in order to unravel the meaning, in order to get the meaning of Kamla Das' poems. Now, see the very first line that she writes, it actually tells us how assertive Kamla Das could be and how uh, she, she wanted to have her own presence and voice felt. Do not write in English, they said, English is not your mother tongue. Why not leave me alone, critics, friends, visiting cousins, every one of you, why not let me speak in? I mean, this actually tells not only about Kamla Das, but this in a way also tells in general the voice of the women. In general, the voice of the Indians also, because till now we had been bearing the burden of writing in English and we were considered to be imitators and that is why Kamla Das also makes a sort of experimentation with the sort of musical constructions and whatsoever she makes and then she says, no, every one of you, why not let me speak in any language I like, the language I speak becomes mine, its distortions, its queerness. So, this is actually a response to all those people who uh, say that Kamla Das actually made many alterations with language, but in Kamla Das world feelings are more important than the constructions. Body is more important, the nuances of the body is more important because body is some way or the other considered to be the storehouse of all feelings and it is not only the physical body, rather the body of language also, the body of emotions as well. All mine, mine alone, it is half English, half Indian, funny perhaps, but it is honest, it is as human as I am human, do not you see? And here also she takes a dig that 
it is as human as I am. Why not women be also considered to be human? Why you always consider women to be the secondary uh, uh, sex? Why do you consider to them uh, the second rate citizens and all? And in terms of language also, what language we speak, even if that may be funny, but then that is my language and it grows. I was a child and later they told me I grew, for all I became tall, my limbs swelled and one or two places sprouted here, the autobiographical rather. When I asked for love, not knowing what else to ask, for he drew a youth of 16 into the bedroom and closed the door, he did not beat me. But my sad woman body felt so beaten, you know, early marriage, there is actually a dig at. The weight of my breasts and womb crushed me, I shrank pitifully. So, in a way, she reuse the early marriages that Indian women were fated to. And even though here it is uh, personal in the case of Kamala Das, but it is in general that was there was actually a practice going on and it is here for the first time that Kamala Das revolted, she was considered to be a rebel rebellion. And you see, as she goes further, she says, then I wore a shirt and my brother's trousers, cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness. And you know what they would say? Dress in saris, be girl, be wife, they said, be embroider, be cook. Here she is talking about the roles that women are destined to. And she says that why they are destined only to these roles. Fit in, oh, belong, cried the categorizers. Don't sit on walls or peep in through our lace draped windows. Be Emmy or be Kamala or better be Madhavi Kutti. It is time to choose a name, a role. Don't play pretending games. Don't play at schizophrenia or be a nympho. Now, this is how the society actually treats a woman. And in Kamala's case, she was actually asked to have a name. She actually should, should be uh, seen doing all the activities that a woman is expected of. But Kamala revolted, fine. And why Kamala revolted? Because Kamala believed that it was not only the dominion or it was the world did not belong only to men, rather the world also belonged to women and they must have a voice of their own. So majority of the poems uh, of Kamala Das you will find they are drenched in deep despair they are they, they they actually consist of all sorts of you know impediments that women often have to face in a male dominated society and that is why kamla das appears to be very harsh now we can also take some other poems i am actually trying to make you familiar with some other poems as well though kamla das is a very familiar name and here in this poem also you will find the poem is titled the dance of the eunuchs the dance of the eunuchs and here in this poem also you will find out how they are also treated. And here at the background is a woman. It was hot, so hot before the eunuchs came to dance. Wide skirts going round and round, symbols. You will find there is no meter, but there is actually a musicality of thoughts. Richly classing, anklets, jingling, jingling. See the repetition. Jingling beneath the fiery gulmohar with long braid flying. Dark eyes flashing, they danced and they danced, oh, they danced till they bled. There were green tattoos on their cheeks, jasmines in their hair, some were dark and some were almost fair. Their voices were harsh, their songs melancholy, they sang of lovers dying and our children left and warm. Even though she is talking about the eunuchs, but she is actually talking about the misery. She is actually talking about the sorrow. She is actually talking about the exploitation. She is actually talking about the male dictat, what the male dictat thinks of woman to be and what the male dictat also thinks of the eunuchs to be. Some beat their drums, others beat their sorry breasts and wailed and writhed in vacant ecstasy. They were thin in lamps and dry like half burned logs from funeral pyres. A drought and a rottenness were in each of them. Even the crows were so silent on trees and the children wide eyed still. So the sort of misery or the sort of operation that were being operated upon them, I think perhaps even the birds still were silent. They are also an eyewitness what sort of society we are living in. All were watching these poor creatures, convulsions. The sky cracked then. 
Even, even you know, the heavenly bodies can crash, but not the man's world. Thunder came and lightning and rain, and a meager rain that smelt of dust in attics and the urine of lizards and mice. So through this poem, you can find the sort of operation that is often women uh, are victimized to. And not only women, but those people who are considered, you know, those people who are considered unapproved of in decent social circles, the same treatment they get. If we have a look at, in a general way, the characteristics of Kamla Dash poem, we can find that she is a, a confessional poet because she follows the pattern of Sylvia Plath and Robert Lowell. Of course, the lines that Kamla Dash actually enumerates and transcribes, they are full of the confession, confession of dissatisfaction. And that is why Kamla Das can be considered not only a usual singer of women's problems, but she is considered to be an iconoclast. Iconoclast is a person who breaks the commonly held beliefs and ideas. And in that regard, Kamla Das is the one who cannot be ignored. In majority of her poems, especially in introduction and all, you can find uh, childhood memories are in plenty. And then, Behind, besides all that, the desire for intense sexual, you know, intense sexual craving is followed by guilt. Many people have often gone to the extent of saying that Kamla Das talks about sex. Kamla Das also feels at times guilty of, but she had one purpose and the purpose was to tell the outside world what underwent a woman's heart, what were the hidden feelings in a woman's throat, in a woman's psyche. So majority of her poems are psychological and then uh, we can hear the depressive voices, fine. And Kamala Das takes recourse to fantasies, flamboyance. The images that she uses are quite startling, but then there is actually uh, a search for the soul, a search for the sense of the soul. It is, it is often said that Kamala Das was not happy with her own marriage. And uh, she always looked for substitutes and for alternatives. She also developed some relations with other people. And even at times uh, with uh, some people of uh, different uh, types as well. And that is why Kamala Das has been criticized a lot. Uh, but then uh, in, in, uh, in, in the views of Kamala Das, she actually wanted to experiment her own life. And she had in several interviews said that she has got only one life and that life has to be enjoyed. Here. It is uh, quite pertinent to mention uh, a comment by M. K. Naik who says, Kamala Das actually uh, describes women as sweetheart, flirt, wife, woman of the world, mother, middle-aged, entron, and above all, woman as an untiring seeker of the nature of psychological processes behind both femininity and masculinity. So there is actually a charge on the masculine order, the masculine order that does not allow a woman to be woman because she sings of her womanism and that is why Kamala Das has been derided. There is another uh, poem by Kamala Das entitled The Old Playhouse. Here also you will find how she actually tries to think of the freedom how she tries to find a sort of authentic voice, a sort of freedom of choice, but as a woman she cannot. And that is why she says, you plan to tame a swallow to hold her in the long summer of your love so that she would forget not the raw seasons alone and the homes left behind, but also her nature, the urge to fly. The urge to fly, you cannot keep a woman caged, my dear friend, for long. And the endless pathways of the sky, every woman has got the right also to look at the beauty of the sky, the stars, the moon and the sun. It was not to gather knowledge of yet another man that I came to you, but to learn what I was. So, a woman should be considered also as an individual and not as a secondary being. That is why Kamala Das actually reuse. I, I came to learn what I was and by learning to learn to grow. But every lesson you gave was about yourself. I mean, you always try to silence my voice. 
you were pleased with my body's response for for you i was only a body a toy a slave fine i was only a prisoner in my own cell i also should have a soul of my own and that the men's world have often ignored it's whether its usual sallow convulsions you dribbled the spittle into my mouth so very autobiographical here the tone is autobiographical but confessional you poured yourself into every nook and cranny you embalmed my poor lust with your bitter sweet juices you called me wife look at the lines you called me wife i was taught to break saccharine into your tea the traditional mores the traditional customs the daily duties that a woman is often expected of and to offer at the right moment the vitamins covering beneath your monstrous ego i ate the magic loaf and became a dwarf where was my own entity i was simply insignificant i lost my will and reason to all your questions i mumbled incoherent replies i was not i was not expected of saying anything adding anything a converting anything replying anything the summer begins to pall i remember the rudder bridges of the fall and the smoke from the burning leaves your room is always lit by artificial lights your windows windows always shut so there is an image your windows always shut you simply believe uh, me or a woman as a piece of entertainment even the air conditioner helps so little all pervasive is the male scent of your breath what i can smell is only the scent of a male there has to be a proper union between a male and a female a man and a woman but then what the women have suffered all through the ages is that women are only the secondary sources they are the sources of delight the cut flowers in the vases have begun to smell of human sweat there is no more singing no more dance my mind is an old playhouse with all its lights put out so there we find a sort of depressive note the strong man's technique is always the same so as a man you have always considered yourself the stronger one he serves his love in lethal doses for love is narcissus at the water's edge haunted by its own lonely fish and yet it must seek at last at end a pure total freedom it must will the mirrors to satter and the kind night to erase the water and towards the end she asks the question by its own lonely face and yet it must seek at least i must seek i must search for my own soul an end exterminate a pure total freedom it must will the mirrors to satter and the kind night to erase the water so there is a melody a melody of thoughts even though the lines may at times appear to be very free abrupt yet they are suffused soaked in feelings feelings of desire flee feelings of belonging feelings of anxiety feelings of a new wish that they also stand they also exist so if you analyze uh, this poem the old playhouse you you may find uh, that even though it is autobiographical in nature it actually talks about the disenchantment with a sort of married life it's, it was actually in the case of kamala das it was kamala das but it is actually a general trend that was prevalent of course we have come to a world where there are lots of changes taking place but these poems were written in the 1960s my dear friends so the poet also talks about a sort of emotional vacuum fine there's a protest against egoistic husband and you know it is it is not surprising to note that madhav das had allowed kamla das to have her own freedom and to have her own ways and that was also you know that was also full of same for kamla das she felt that this man could not believe uh, that there should be a proper union so when a woman seeks love outside the bonds of marriage i think of course there is some way or the other some problem 
the language used in this poem, the old playhouse is very figurative. You might have found the use of uh, several literary devices, uh, no repetitions, at times several similes, uh, metaphors, there are mythical illusions in the form of uh, Narcissus and it also talks about the power politics, the power politics that exists between a man and a woman. But apart from all these, what is of utmost importance is that the poem has got a sort of feminine sensibility, a sort of feminine element is there. Nayak uh, already says uh, that she seems to have said almost all her inhibitions both as a woman and as an Indian woman. So, now here you can find that there is a tendency, a tendency towards change. I mean the old order actually requires a sort of change and especially we can also find a sort of consciousness on the part of a woman. There are other poems also namely the sun sign cat where you can also find the misery and the title itself is very symbolic. The sun sign cat. So, the cat no, the uh, cat or the um, feline qualities, you know, I mean being submissive, that is what a woman does not want, especially uh, in, the, in the poetry of Kamla Das, she does not want a woman simply to have the feline qualities and we can take some of the lines, they did this to her, the men who know her, the man she loved, who loved her not enough, being selfish and a coward the husband who neither loved nor used her but was ruthless watcher and the band of cynics he turned to clinging to the chests where new hair sprouted like great winged moths burrowing her face into the smells and the young lusts to forget to forget oh to forget and they said each of them I do not love I cannot love it is not in my nature to love but I can be kind to you. So, now, now, now see here the way she actually reverses to forget or to forget and they said each of them I do not love, I do not love, I can only be sympathetic. Meaning thereby a woman's life was deprived of love rather they were only considered to be the objects of sympathy and as the poem goes further, winter came in one day while locking her in, notice that the cat of sunshine was only a line and a half thin line and in the evening when he returned to take her out, she was a cold and half dead woman. So, see the metaphor. See, she was a cold and half dead woman now of no use at all to men. The implication of the semblance is that a woman actually requires love, love nourishes, love cherishes, love makes her flourish in her life. And without love, a life of a woman is useless. So, in the lack of love, a woman not only becomes cold, that, but she actually uh, becomes dead even before her time comes. Now, when we analyze this poem also, we can find it, it actually talks about a forlorn woman who actually is suffering not only physically, but mentally uh, at the treatment of the cynic men. Uh, cynic men who actually seek extramarital relations, but then they do not love. So, there is actually a sort of frustration uh, in love that is what uh, this poem talks about. We can take some uh, more lines. Uh, while there are poets and critics who have considered uh, Kamla Das only to be a poet of uh, a poet who, who is confined to herself, but then Kamla Das also was concerned about other women, especially about her own grandmother, about her own maid who had committed suicide also. And then one day she asked her grandmother why uh, her maid servant committed suicide. And you know, everyone, I mean society has actually trained everyone to say you have to forget and we can take some of the lines here uh, from the poem entitled Nani where he says, where the poem says, I asked my grandmother one day, don't you remember Nani, the dark plump one who bathed me near the well, grandmother sifted the reading glasses on her nose and stared at me, Nani she asked, who is she? With that question ended Nani, each truth ends thus with a query, each truth ends thus with a query, a meaning thereby if you raise a question and uh, you must go without an answer, you, you cannot raise a question and you know there is actually a custom 
uh, that women should not ask questions and especially those women who are maid servants why are you talking about that they are lucky who ask questions and move on before the answers come those wise ones who reside in a blue silent zone unscratched by doubts for theirs is the clotted piece embedded in life like music in the quail's egg like lust in the blood or like the sap in a tree so grandmother did not answer what went wrong uh, with nani who had committed suicide my dear friends society has trained both men and women that women are secondary and that is what kamla das revolted against so kamla das uh, literary corpus is uh, you know excessive one can go on and on but then we should also look at her style kamla das had a very natural style uh, it appeared as if words in in one poem she says words words and words words come to me fine because she wanted to write and as i mentioned earlier that while i wanted to write i could not live and i could not live without writing fine so there was a natural style and there was a natural fair flair for words and then in this poem uh, the looking glass from descendants what she says getting a man to love you is easy only be honest about your wants as woman gift him all now now here let us look at this poem from the linguistic point of view gift is not used in english as a verb but here kamla das actually breaks the canons and uh, she says gift him all gift him what makes you a woman the scent of long hair the musk of way, sweat between the breasts uh, the warm sock of menstrual blood and all your endless female hungers oh yes getting a man to love is easy but leaving without him afterwards may have to be faced meaning thereby she actually talks about the flexible you know ever changing nature of man man is only after the last man is not after love and finally in in the last stanza she says gave up their search with ears that hear only his last voice calling out your name and your body which once under his touch had gleamed like burnished brass now drab and destitute so it is very easy to get a man to love you but can you live after his love because his love is not true his love is not rational he will simply leave you after he has exploited you of his own hungers or oh yes getting a man to love is easy but living without him afterwards may have to be faced a living without life when you move around meeting strangers with your eyes that gave of such so this is this is and here we can find if you have a have a careful look at the way words have been used and the symbols have been used fine you will find uh, kamla das was a natural poet as regards language and versification you can find many of her lines actually end in unstressed lines sometimes you can also find the lines are stressed best but then one thing is very important that she is quite conversational throughout and another is uh, that she will actually make her end rhymes no end rhymes at times musical at times unmusical but then she can also drop off you know syntactic orders uh, sometimes definite and indefinite articles will be dropped off english can appear to be creolized at times because kamla das had already said and you remember that the language i speak in becomes mine isn't it so and in this regard what bruce king says is very important often her vocabulary idioms choice of verbs and some syntactical constructions are part of what has been termed the indianization of english now having a look at kamla das poetic corpus we can make an assessment and we can also look through uh, the lenses of other contemporary poets and critics what they have said one of them named vilas sarang says that uh, because kamla das did not have any formal education so vilas sarang says as ramanujan's poetry suffers from an excess of intellectual control but this you cannot find in kamla das das poetry is harmed by a lack of intellectual molding there were emotions emotions and emotions only there is a browning browning quality in her uh, poems because her persona sees herself in different situations in different roles 
and you can find the abundance of words that she uses. They actually give you an inkling of depression, exploitation and of what man has done to a woman. Uh, it, is, it is very pertinent here to note there because uh, Kamala Das also had many critics. Some of them, especially Brinda Navar says that even when critics of the future expose the weakness of Das's poetry, she will miraculously transcend the criticism and appeal directly to her readers. So, to, to uh, conclude we can say that Kamala Das is preeminently a poet of love and pain. It was only out of suffering that she wrote all these, suffering in her own life and Daruwala, another poet that we have already discussed makes a very beautiful comment about Kamala Das's work and he says Kamala Das is preeminently a poet of love and pain, one stalking the other through a near neurotic world. There is an all pervasive sense of her throughout. Love is a lazy animal which actually acts like hungers of the flesh, heart and humiliations are the warp and woo for poetic uh, fabric. She seldom ventures outside this personal world. So, she is alleged of being confined to her personal world, but these are only you know criticisms. With criticisms apart, we can always say uh, and, and we can substantiate our point of view by saying that of course, she is obsessed with sex and marriage and social roles, but one cannot ignore the fact that what she says has got a sort of honesty, a frank admission. She is actually proceeding towards a search for her own self. There is a dualism between body and the soul in her poems. She has on many occasions said that you cannot let your body remain hungry, unsatisfied and reach the pinnacles or the perigration of the soul. Her frank assertion and free flow of conflicting emotions are her weapon to respond to the patriarchal dictates in society. Hence, we can always say that Kamala Das's poetry has got enough of feminine sensibility, consciousness and what more. And before we conclude, let me quote one line once again from uh, Kamala Das's poem composition, where we can find that despite talking about or singing about body and its elusive nature, what Kamala Das meant was, uh, she has expressed in another poem named composition where she says that it is actually a process of growth and she says, the tragedy of life is not death but growth, the child growing into an adult and growing out of needs, discovering that the old have black rimmed nails and the scalps from which emanates a sweet moldy smell. And my dear friends, all of us in some way or the other are making a discovery, discovery of our own self which is often in oblivion and we want to regain that self in order to have a supreme bliss, satisfaction and joy. With this, we come to the end of this talk. Thank you very much. I wish you all a good night.